All right, so I'm going to look at some reference and we're going to just break, do a couple quick thumbnails here of alpacas. So I might start with, you know, two ovals like this. Um, we could even do another one here. And I'm just trying to establish, you know, what are some shapes that I can use to draw these things, all right? And got our front legs, hind legs. So right now it looks like a robot alpaca, but it, it helps me to think about the thing in raw geometry before committing to, um, you know, doing a full sketch, for example. So drawing through um, totally helps. Some ears for alpaca. Now it's starting to look like a cat, but as I mentioned before, we're going to be kind of drawing together on this one and just figuring it out. So I wonder if I can use like a triangle for at least the mouth portion. And then the eyes. This looks like an angry alpaca, but something like this. Maybe this needs to come out a little bit more. And they kind of have a, a little smile. But once again, just understanding this geometry and observing and pivoting just helps me kind of establish proportional things or, you know, a gesture. So there's a gesture here of maybe I just have kind of a, an overall arc. And then the leg in the back like so. Do they have tails? I guess they do, just a little bit. Yeah, I need to work on the face, obviously. But we'll keep going, do some rough sketches. Okay, so now I should be able to, you know, I've, I've done this, I'm not looking at an image right now, but I've, I've done this a couple times, so now I can kind of, freestyle my alpaca and this one just being from a mem from just the little observation that I I did okay and that's what I mean by you observe and now pivot I am going to focus on the eyes a little bit and the nose just make sure we get get that looking looking right Looks kind of like an angry dog or deer though. So there's something about, maybe it's the hair on the top of an alpaca. Not quite sure what that, that magic is, but this one could serve as a pretty decent underlay, I think. All right, so maybe this is our first successful and Obviously, these are all standing. I don't know what a sitting alpaca looks like, so let's see. Legs would probably be something like this, I imagine. You know, again, just trying to map out those shapes. This one kind of looks like a dog. All right, so I'm gonna put these to the side and now I will do, let's see, maybe I'll do a head just cause I need to work on the heads and then I'll do like a standing alpaca as well. All right, so head of an alpaca. It looks like I can even block it out kind of like this. 
to start, or we could even have circle, circle, just other ways to maybe look at it. Nose like so. Yeah, these guys are interesting. <laughs> Thank you for the challenge. Kind of got these like mops of hair too. So I'm just gonna focus on Actually, that looks, I think that would work, actually. <laughs> they certainly, uh, they've got a look to them, for sure. Oops. Oh, Siri. Siri thought I was talking to her. My apologies. Here we go. Boom. Just having all sorts of music trouble today. Oh well. They'll switch to this. Not the best audio, but it'll work. And this one here, like I was saying, maybe now that I kind of have an understanding of the shapes a bit more. They almost look like Teenagers with like a bad haircut or something. Like a derpy teenager with a bad haircut. It's kind of what they look like. Right? What do you guys think? So I think I like this boxy one a lot better than, than this one, but circles, another way you can kind of work things out. Let's go ahead and shade these in, and then we'll do a full-bodied alpaca as well. Just trying to make sure I don't miss any like really important things. They don't exactly have all right. So I'm gonna go with brown on this guy. Just this nice big Copic marker. We'll go a little lighter for the hair on the top. Maybe. Actually, I may have to go darker because I overshaded. So we'll go a little darker. All right, something like that. Right around the eyes, I just want to get a little shadowing happening, just a little darker there. Remember, I'm thinking of this in terms of like 
what are the base shapes and where would the shadows be? Okay, so on the far side of the object, definitely more shadowed than the near side. And just a random gray marker for some of these. This is a neutral gray. So yeah, it would probably take a few iterations here to get it looking a lot better, but you guys wanted an alpaca, so here we go. All right. Get the eye, nose, just like that. This guy, let's let's do a gray, grayish alpaca for this one. I'm gonna use a warm gray. Yeah, so this set has a warm gray three, one, four, I think a seven and a nine. But the cool grays for some reason just don't have There's no cool grade three. It's really, really, really weird. So that's my one big criticism. It's like, I'd rather give up the green or blue gray if I could get a cool grade three here. Remy says, I love to see you finally having some difficulty with something, especially how you're owning it. Big thumbs up. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I don't think I'm the best at everything. But I'm willing to learn, try new stuff. You guys wanted nature sketching, so that's what we're doing, and I have a long way to go. So I um, appreciate you hanging and being a part of this, but usually I figure something out that works. And I'll do a full body alpaca as well. This guy's name's Gary. He likes going on long walks on the beach. <laughs> this is the one's that angry dog with a long neck. Yeah, I can see that. It needs to be like cuter or something. So I gotta figure out how to do that. But yeah, if you're not doing difficult things from time to time, like I said, you're probably not growing. So it's okay. Also, sometimes part of teaching is really just about making those mistakes yourself and figuring out ways to come to a successful outcome. And frankly, the more you do something, the better you get. So no harm, no foul. Doesn't need to be perfect. But yeah, it definitely looks like more like a dog here. <laughs> That little alpa alpaca. So sketch a day live. Thanks for hanging on the nature episode. Doing an alpaca. We're gonna do a full bodied one next. I'm trying to figure out how to like resolve the side of the head. That's kind of the problem I'm having. So let me look at a couple more. Okay, it looks like it kind of has a face here and then almost like a beard or something going on. So maybe that's part of what's missing, maybe.
Yeah, I think so. I think even on this one, if there was a bit more fur or of a coat around the face, it would feel a little bit less dog-like. So that's just an arrow, but I think if I were to fill that in, it would, it would help out a ton. Just looking at these again, the reference images, so. Let's use the brush here, to kind of fill it out. And to me anyways, it already looks, looks quite a bit better. Although now it looks a little bit like a terrier. <laughs> so maybe Remy is right. I gotta go practice some more. Yeah, it totally looks like a terrier. But I will make this sketch available as well on the Google Drive. I'm gonna own it. This is my alpaca. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to f trying to fix the volume of this just a little bit. See how we do. There's only so much of this I get to do before it gets too busy, so I just have to be a little bit careful with this black or really dark warm gray, I should say. Well, it's some kind of animal, maybe not an alpaca, but it's something. Let's do a full bodied alpaca. Alpaca. I'll do it vertically on the page here. So, Sketch Day Live, thanks for joining. Oh, a dolphin. Yeah, I was going to do a dolphin. Maybe we'll do it next time we do a nature day. So sorry. I forgot. All right. So, I'm just going to. Lean on, and I'll probably do an overlay of this one. But again, just kind of what I did initially with those gestures. This I, I'm gonna pull this leg in. So we almost have like this overall shape to the alpaca. And then I'll tweak proportions as needed. So just looking at reference again, making sure proportionally, again, not copying the image, but just checking, okay, how do these things look in terms of proportion? 
you know. Where they they look like they're creepy. They look like people, but not like people. So it's kind of hard. <laughs> it's hard for me to even keep a straight face doing this. All right, something like that. Maybe I can squeeze a dolphin in when, maybe. All right, that looks pretty good. So now overlay. And when I say I'll upload everything, I mean everything. So I like to put even the underlays. I'll just run these through my scanner. And everything will be available online. Okay, so brush pen time. Try and be a little bit more expressive in the outline or outlines here. Because I do have that underlay now. And just leave behind the under sketch and kind of have a more expressive line to everything. So something like this. I actually don't know if they have paws or hooves. That's the other thing I'm not quite sure on. So I'm gonna have to look that up. Do alpaca alpacas have paws or hoofs? Does anyone know? Maybe I should consult the book of knowledge here. Or just, yeah, I'll just look it up. I'll pack a foot. <laughs> oh, so they have a cloven foot, just bifurcated, meaning split into two. And maybe that's weird to look at, so we'll just keep it somewhat abstract. Maybe on some pasture land with some other alpacas hanging out in the background for context, maybe some sort of barn or farmhouse off in a distance. Something like that. And so I'm just going to use this brush marker and just kind of shade in generally. You know, like the cross section of this alpaca would be somewhat cylindrical, 
So say in this area, I wanna have a little bit more intense shading. We're gonna get reflected light. So these are all things I'm thinking of when even shading something like this, but also respecting musculature, at least I'm no expert on that, but um, right where we have you know, this leg meeting the body, for example, keeping that a little bit more shadowed. This back leg, I'll just shade that in. And it is fur, so I don't necessarily need my shading to be perfect here. Let's jump to this warm gray one, just for the top, and then I'll kind of blend in here on the side. All right, I think we can squeeze a dolphin in, so don't worry. And my apologies for not checking the chat. I'm just a little distracted here. This is Sketch Day Live. Thank you for joining. Thanks for being a part of this. This is super fun. Yeah, they do kind of have hoofs of sorts. But I mean, <laughs> They kind of look freaky like people. It's interesting. <laughs> Nicholas says, let me borrow a few of those Copics. <laughs> well, I've thought about doing like giveaways and stuff. Um, certainly if a manufacturer is sponsoring the stream, we could do more of that, but we'll see. If any of you guys know people who work for those companies, have them reach out. Totally fun to do some giveaways. So again, just be sure to download or check out the Google Drive after the stream. Usually takes me about an hour just to kind of recover and get things uploaded, but I will. And then you can see the original sketch from the stream there. And it's usually a photo or like a high resolution scan. Just depends on how I'm feeling or the size of the paper too. Oop. Wrong one there. Okay, warm gray three. Thank you, Remy. Remy made a contribution. I hope that's okay to call you out, but thank you through PayPal. So thank you, thank you. All right, let's get some just light grass tone in here and then a little bit of a shadow, call it good. All right, so I'm just trying to get a base green here. I do need as well a lighter green going forward, but less saturated. So I'll use some green gray as well as, let's see, just going off the caps of these markers and hoping that it kind of works out. So we'll see. Some green gray which actually works pretty well. You know, further away you move, the less saturated those colors would be anyways. All right, so I wanna blend into these two.
So just a bit of back and forth and we should be able to get some sort of blend from more saturated to less saturated. Unless I'm losing my mind. Ah oh yeah, there we go. That's starting to feel a little better. some of these grassy things here. Just throw some of this in the front. It's kind of nice to not do products on the stream as well. So Designberg says, did not expect to see a llama. Yeah, or alpaca. Um, we're doing nature today <laughs> by request. So that's why there's an alpaca here. And kind of went through the process of like me learning how to draw one because I've never drawn one. So we went through this process and then we did some heads and I'm like, man, these look like dogs. And then we finally came to this point. And I think just to show you guys that it does take iteration. I don't just get up in the morning like I can draw anything. Let's do it. Um, you have to kind of start with some observation first. And then when you have that information in your head, it's a lot easier to be able to sketch something. So if someone asked me to sketch a llama or an alpaca from now on, I'm like, yeah, I can probably do that. I've done it before, right? So that's, that's kind of the point of this exercise. And I intentionally did not practice before the stream because I wanted to show you how I work. Plus it also saved me time. <laughs> I didn't have to warm up before anything. All right, let's get the shadow on the ground and then we'll do a dolphin and call it good. And this will probably be the longest stream I've done in a while. So you're welcome. All right, let's use, I wanna blend something like a green gray or something like that. Also, these aren't Copic markers. These are Ohuhu markers. This one's too light. So I think I need like a five, something five. Yeah, that works. So I just wanted some shadow for the alpaca on the ground, but cool colors as shadows, general rule. Shadows will be more intense on the inside of the shadowed area than the outsides. Okay, this is blue, green, five. So I'm gonna jump to three here. Just get some variation in the grass, just a little bit and work on the outline, but it's feeling pretty good. So thanks again for the challenge. I think kind of got to a decent place here. I was a little concerned when I was doing those alpaca heads though. It's like, man, this is, it's gonna be a rough one, but we pulled it out.
So the, the purpose of the line work here is just to pull this alpaca and separate it from the background a little bit. You can tell it's a little bit light on the underbelly here. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken that up. And this hind leg, I wanna push it back. So that's the reason for the extra ink here to push that back, bring the rest forward. Reflected light's good, but by reflected light, I mean just this rim or edge light. But at the same time, it is a furry alpaca, so it's not going to be shiny. So you kind of want to watch out for that. And with my shading, just trying to be respectful or imply that there is some sort of texture fur on this thing. Okay, something like that. Since we've already been doing sky stuff, I'll just add a little sky tone here around the head. Very light, very subtle. This is a pale blue gray Copic. All right, very subtle, but it's there. There's my alpaca, alpaca. All right, so that concludes the alpaca section. We had our alpaca dogs. 